The lay of the land in Buffalo is super, super confusing. Shoot, I know people who lived here all their life and still don't know about all the different areas that Buffalo has and has to offer. So if you guys are looking to move up here, we're about to go over everything to familiarize yourself with not only the city but that specific town that you've been researching and where it's located compared to the downtown the north towns the south towns and everything in between where to eat where to shop where commute times could be going to work we're about to cover every single thing you need right now what's going on you guys i hope all is well as always i'm super super glad that you guys are returning back to the channel so welcome to you guys as new to the channel if you don't already know this is buffalo living where we cover every single thing buffalo on this channel and today we're actually going to be given a good lay of the land of the buffalo area as mentioned in the intro it could be kind of confusing for a lot of people trying to familiarize themselves if you guys are moving up here from out of town or you just in buffalo all your life and still don't know where a couple of things are so we're going to go over the city we're going to go over the north towns the south towns what both of those things are and where a lot of things are inside of the those different neighborhoods or pocketed towns that a lot of people always hear about. Before we get into the maps, if you guys don't already know, my name is Devonta Davis, the local realtor in and around the Buffalo area. So if you guys are trying to become Buffalonians or move up to the Buffalo area, or you're already in Buffalo looking to move around to these different neighborhoods that we're going to talk about, real estate is my thing and I would love to be a service. Whether you're buying, looking to sell, then buy, whatever it may be, make sure you guys hit me up with a call, email, or text. Now that we we are on a map right here. What we're going to be doing is I'm going to take you guys through the entire Buffalo area and where every single thing is located. Again, we're going to be talking about the city, which you can kind of see the city borders right here. And then you go, we are also going to be taking our time out to show all the suburbs, which is the north up here and then the south down here. Now I'll break this down in one second. Let me just show you guys just from the beginning, because a lot of people think Buffalo is like super, super close to New York. First of all, this is New York right here. I know this is this is New York right here. This oddly shaped area right here, right? I know that's ugly. I'm sorry. But nonetheless, this is New York. Buffalo is here. New York City, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Staten Island, Long Island, all that stuff is way over here. This right here, this distance from here, oh my gosh, that's ugly. Uh, <laughs> the, these two distances right here are about six to about eight hours apart. We, when I mean Buffalo and New York City itself is night and day, it's not even remotely close a to each other and the cultures the shape the people it's totally different if you want to make a comparison new york is that rough on the go i mean super super fast paced style of living buffalo is literally the south up north that's how i describe it to a lot of people that's the best way it makes sense from someone who's traveled a lot of this u.s buffalo is a southern state located up north it's a southern state that gets snow let's put it like that either way it goes this is the city of buffalo so how we break this down as i was talking about earlier here's the city right here right this is buffalo downtown inside this border right here so these are pretty much all the entire city limits with the uh centrality being sorry about that with the centrality being downtown right so here right this is how i describe it i don't over romanticize north towns versus south towns this is how i break it down i draw a nice line it's a crooked one nonetheless this is what we call the north towns down here is what we call the south towns for a lot of you who pay attention to how much snow we get down in the south right here so this border anything below here this is where we get all of the snow in this boxed area. If you live below here, you probably get an extra 28 to about 30 inches of snow each year. I think I was just looking at the stats. The stats were saying something like Orchard Park gets like 114 on average. Remember this past uh, winter when they got six feet of snow? It was very true. It was not a game. It, it gets crazy down there compared to Amherst. So Orchard Park is right here. 
compared to Amherst, which is up here, only gets like 84 inches of snow per year, 80 inches of snow, something like that per year. So that's it. Here's Buffalo downtown. Here's the north. Here's the south. So let's get into it. We'll start inside the city limits first, as always. That way, we'll be able to describe, you know, like the different areas. There's four parts. You got North Buffalo, South Buffalo, East Side, West Side. That's the way we break it down. But we'll start again in the Buffalo downtown area, and we'll kind of branch out to where a lot of the different things are. So this is downtown. If you guys are coming into the Buffalo area, this is where probably a lot of you are going to stay just because it's downtown and you can walk everywhere for the most part you have everything down here here's our city hall right here as you can see the buffalo city hall here and then you also have a lot of hotels you have a lot of eatery so this is pretty much pearl street here you have some great restaurants one of my favorite restaurants is pearl street bar and brewery down here they make amazing food yes it is a brewery they have you know the flight clubs that you can taste all the different beers that they have it's an amazing place to be i mean that's that's one of my favorite places to go if i'm downtown and specifically they have a garlic parm chicken wing i like the chicken fingers a lot better but they have a garlic parm chicken finger off the chain i'm telling you also down here is Saline's Field. So this is where the Bisons play. This is where you have like a couple of festivals every now and again, but mostly Bisons when the, when we had COVID, the Blue Jays are playing here, things like that. So you can always catch a Bisons game downtown. And this is also right next door, literally, this is where the Seneca One building is is Seneca one is a huge a lot of office space in there very big on entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurship office space kind of like a we work for you guys that's coming from out of town a we work or like a regency or something like that this is where you can host events MT has like two or three floors in here you can do all types of stuff in here um, and it also has about four to about five floors of residential space from three bedrooms all the way down to very, very small studios. A little more expensive to live down here, um, but it's downtown, so you, you, you're always going to have that. But downtown, you have every single thing you need. Um, I mean, really nothing that you cannot have. And there's been a lot of development going on down here, which is perfect. If we look up, if you guys are downtown and you guys want to party, this is you know really where our party uh, area is at. You're going to look for two streets really called Chippewa. Chippewa, like West Tupper and in Pearl, there's a really, really nice bar called Vice down here. I love it. If you catch me out, this is probably where I'm going to be. Either Vice, Savoy, which is over on Elmwood, and then also the big party uh, spot is Allentown. This is Allentown right here, or Josh Allentown, as this dude just took over this entire name. Josh Allen from the Bills, yeah, he got his own town that's been here before him. Ain't that something? Anyways, but this is pretty much where a lot of your partying, a lot of your bars are really going to be outside of this street called Chippewa. Allentown is, I don't even know how many bars is on this meet. Let's call it 10 or 12 on like this block here. No exaggeration. There's about 10 bars in this block radius off Allen. So, I mean, it's a, it's, it's definitely a nice place to be. So right here is Allen Street. This is, it's about 10 bars here. I like Folly Alley, especially A, they close at 4 a.m., which is amazing. Uh, and then <laughs> B, I mean, I think it's just a nice vibe in there. But there's bars for everybody. And then also, there's the famous spot, Gabriel's Gate, which is the famous chicken wings down there. I mean, you have a bunch of places to eat. If you want some really, really good Mediterranean Greek food, the town, um, restaurant is good and i really do like cafe 59 too as well if you guys want something more like a lunch meeting or something like that grab it on the go fat bobs is another really really good um option for you guys too as well but let's get out of downtown and let's head up to north buffalo um actually let's swing on down to canal side front first so this is canal side here downtown 
So this is pretty much like the waterfront. You got a bunch of parks over here um, as well. Uh, you got a dog park. I mean, you got the Buffalo Yacht Club is over here too. A lot of things to do alongside the water. A lot of things. You you also have um, like the Naval Ship Park over here where you can see those big old um, Naval ships that used to battle and go through all of that. If you guys really want to have a good time though, I really recommend you guys go to this area right here, which is basically what we call canal side canal side is a really 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 fun place to be and specifically because you have something called buffalo river works this is bars entertainment live music stuff on the water they had something noise that it was like a bar on the water you can literally rent this thing out and you can take the buffalo river all the way up and down and it will you could literally just drink on the water a lot of people park their boats outside here uh well really on this one people park their boats alongside this um along the buffalo river here and literally just people have a good time this is a really nice park if you just conway park this is a really really nice park if you guys just want to go sit out there and have a good time for all you people who just looking to possibly invest first ward in larkinville and then we'll get into the west side in one second those are really three areas they're looking to move up one thing you will notice is that you have a lot of breweries down here a lot of breweries so you have regency uh, let's get so you have you got uh, Briar Brothers, which is here. You have Re you got Pearl Street, which we already talked about. And you also have Regency here. And then right next door to Regency Brewing Company is actually Hartman's Distillery. So as you guys know, Buffalo is a huge drinking city. And this area right here is pounding or i mean just booming with breweries every oh you got buffalo brewing company and you also have i forget what it's called um it's like the old first war oh gene mccarthy's that's what it's called gene mccarthy's uh is a, is a brewery too is i mean very very good so let's get out of downtown because we could talk about that all day long and that's pretty much the entire downtown area for sure including again allentown so if we're heading north this is going to be what we call North Buffalo up here. So it surrounds pretty much um, Delaware Park, which is the famous park here. So oh, let's cut that off. So this is pretty much North Buffalo right here. If we in, in, include some parts of Hanlon Park, but this is pretty much North Buffalo. This is like the suburb inside the city to a lot of people. Houses are still a bit close together. Like you're not going to get the massive backyard, but you're going to get a really, really good size yard compared to a lot of other sections of the city. And you can definitely expect to get a driveway and a garage. Places like the west side, definitely the east side. South Buffalo, you may or may not get a garage. It just depends on kind of the street you're on. But North Buffalo, Buffalo is getting, it was set to kind of be like that suburb inside the city, especially this beautiful area right here called Central Park. Central Park was literally built by Lewis Bennett to be a suburb inside the city. Beautiful homes over there, very expensive, depending on which block you're on. I mean, you can find anything over there from 400 to about... 700,000 easily if you guys want something that's in the, you know a normal i can't even say normal price range because that's relative but if you want something in the average price range north park north buffalo are really going to be even even north delaware are going to be places that you really want to the even this subsection right here called park meadow these are going to be very similar to orchard park when it comes to the beautiful houses and because of the park meadow and when it was built in like that pan america expo those houses are are going to be a lot more expensive in this low five six block radius right here and it comes off of elmwood which is key because the two streets that you're going to really look for to do a lot of your shopping your amenities your partying your going out your restaurants things like that is going to be is going to be elmwood avenue like we talked about previously and then also hurdle hurdle this long strip right in here which is hurdle this is kind of where a lot of people, especially in the summertime, really start to hang out. 
personally, it starts, I can't even say personally, but it, it starts really around hurdle and steering. It's really kind of these three, well, I can't even say three blocks, but this range right here from Delaware Avenue to Starin Avenue, you have majority of where these restaurants are going to be. And we'll zoom in a little bit more here. So once we come here, you will just see, I mean, literally this whole entire street, it's full full of restaurants look how many restaurants is between delaware and staring these are all restaurants bars eateries cafes um i mean the, the famous north park theater is right here you got a lot of things to do inside of hurdle and like that elmwood area and this is very walkable to me this is one of the most walkable areas inside of buffalo not only is it safe but you can see i mean you say you live on norwalk right here you can come out your house boom i mean you're walking right to walgreens you can walk to dashes which is not too far which is a local um like a co you got lexington co-op which is a co-op um and you also can walk right down the street have a couple and then walk right back winter or summer a lot of people walk in the summer obviously because it's super cold in our winters but north buffalo is a really really nice part uh, really, again, like that suburb inside the city feel that you can still be able to get a nice driveway, not really have to worry about off street parking too much. And then if you do have to park on the street, they're not super narrow. These streets in North Buffalo are a lot wider compared to a lot of those around the other parts of the city. Now, I know a lot of you guys always hear about Buffalo and, you know, the old history of redlining. And how certain sections are what well, was made for certain people. That is fairly true here. Buffalo has, again, a long history of redlining. It's a thousand percent better now. North Buffalo, the West Side, which we're about to talk about next, have really become two huge melting pots when it comes to people and people just pouring into these two communities. Buff, so if you guys want to break it down, the West Side was really known as like a Hispanic area. Uh, North Park was really like kind of like the Italian area, more of a Caucasian descent. East Side was more known as a, I should probably be highlighting these, but this is pretty much like the East Side. This is very rough, but East Side was known as like black African American. North Buffalo, which we just talked about, was again known as a huge like Italian based community. And then you also had the West Side, which was kind of known for Hispanic um, descent and then also uh, Caucasian is too as well. Right now, with as much things as going on inside the West Side or over here, there it has turned into a massive melting pot. Some people say a gentrification, but I don't see it that way because I see some of everybody moving over there and starting to grab up not only properties, but really make it their home. So speaking of West Side, let's get into it right away. So this is, let's zoom in a little bit. This is the West Side here, pretty much. If we take this, Kind of draw right off Military Road and come all the way down. Even once we start to push, oh, that's a bad drawing. My apologies. That was bad. Uh, <laughs> so even if we push here, come on down. This is, pretty, this is pretty much Military Road right here. So we'll just break it off there. And then this will pretty much be the west side of Buffalo right before we head back downtown. So this would kind of be um, the west side. Now, for instance, the lower west side has always, uh, this is the upper west side, this is the lower west side. The lower west side has always been kind of like a nicer part, but it's pocketed, it's pocketed because I mean, from park and along kind of like Lakeview, this area is pretty nice, but you do have a couple of spots in here, like off Connecticut, Vermont, Rhode Island, it does get not so well. So even though there's, I mean, tons of money being dumped up and down Niagara Street, which is right here. So I'll show you Niagara Street. This is Niagara Street coming all the way down. 
there's a lot of money being dumped over here. When I mean a lot of money, a lot of money, a lot of new things going in down here on the west side. A lot of money going over here. Um, nonetheless, there's still pocketed areas over here. No matter which section of um, the west side you are in, is going to still need a lot of work. And then another really nice part of uh, the west side or the upper west side is right here off Grant and Ferry. This is a really nice, I mean, talking about million million dollar condos. Next, you go two blocks over, and you're probably looking at a house for like a 150, give or take. So, I mean, there's, there's pockets, especially once you go up and down Richmond, like your house probably cost an extra 20 grand or valued at an extra 20 grand or so just because you live on richmond avenue so it really depends on which pocket you're in but a good a lot of good eatery on the west side some of my favorites is definitely left bank five points bakery is pretty good um the cereal spot is dope this is a new creator spot it's like you literally go in there almost like make a bowl of cereal but it's really more for the experience but you could put like the cereal on ice cream and all that good stuff um I, and then one of my favorite cafes down here is actually bean bastard coffee that is a very very nice spot but a lot of good bars down here the famous lenovas is over here on the west side again by lenovas eh, it's iffy but then you go two blocks up to auburn or maybe even Baines right here you got a really really nice doubles so i mean it's very pocketed um again i have those vlog tours all on the entire um channel so if you guys want to check those out just let me know now let's move on into kind of like the east side quick and then we'll move down into south buffalo then we'll head to the suburbs so let's get rid of that so this is pretty much this is pretty much like the east side so this is main street here right this is main street for a long time, and I dislike this heavily, um, for a long time, people always say, like, the east side of Main Street is no good. I, I don't like that. And this is a, a, a more of, like, a, a statistical thing. But at the same time, if you're in Buffalo, you can see that the east side has, has had some neglect for a while. So if you just draw... Let's go to Bass, even part to Johnson here. Let's just swoop it here. This is pretty much all of the, what we call the east side right here. So this is the east side, right? The east side has part, just seeing, if you look at the different areas of the east side, you'll really notice, I don't even want to say neglect. It's just almost like people have forgotten about like this section of the city, which is very, very unfortunate because there's a lot of great land on the east side. I mean, a ton of land, but also a ton of opportunity. When really when the central terminal left, however many years ago, they stopped using it. This really hurt this area because like the Broadway Fillmore area, like this area down in here, this was really, well, really right here, where the Broadway market is. But this, these these areas here were booming some of 40, 50 some odd years ago. So down here, let me not confuse you. Down here is pretty much where the Buffalo Central Terminal was. This was the mega stop. This area was beautiful, especially where the Broadway market was. I mean, this was all types of shopping, food, people, I mean, cars. I mean, this was the place to be years ago. And when the Central Terminal kind of died, a lot of things went with it, unfortunately. At the same time, the blessing and the curse was that when the shooting happened last year, uh, because of tops, a lot more people started to pay attention to it. I always hate that it has to be a tragic event for something for people to start paying attention to certain things. But this hopefully will really wake a lot of people up for this community that is here. They're supposed to be dumping like 350 million or something like that into the uh, Buffalo, Buffalo Central Terminal, which would be a really nice thing because they now bring so much life back to this community. Nonetheless, it just needs a helping hand. There's a lot of land in Buffalo, especially on the east side, especially the more towards you move downtown. The big question is, will the city sell it to you in order for you to make those updates? The city 
Diddy's like been holding on to these properties for dumb long. I don't know why. I say in every video, if y'all don't want them, send them to me. I know exactly what to do with it. Personally, I think this needs to be an area of affordable housing, new construction of affordable housing, and knock down these old homes that's been boarded up for the last 10 years. The city of Buffalo does not have that new, new build community. It's always in the suburbs, which we're about to talk about right now. It's always in a suburb. So a lot of people don't want to pay those suburb ta suburban taxes. At the same time, will the taxes still be up there because it's a new build? Yes. But you get that city feel. You don't have to live 15, 20 to minutes away to get a brand new home. And I think especially just the affordability housing, that should be something that's key in these next five years going on in the east side and other parts of the city like South Buffalo. Nonetheless, let's get into what we call the North Towns. Again, the North Towns, we're going to draw that line. This is the North Towns. The two major towns that everybody knows about is pretty much Chittawaga, Amherst. These are going to be the main two towns that a lot of people talk about. Oh, I don't know where that line came from. These are gonna. These are pretty much the, the main two towns that a lot of people know. A because Amherst is the biggest suburb that we have, and Chitawaga is right next to it. So the North Towns is kind of like that suburb slash city feel. This is where a lot of people like to move, especially to Amherst because of the school district. People love the school district in Amherst. It is one of the top rated, especially once you get into a little village called Williamsville. Williamsville, to me personally, is the most walkable area from the suburbs to inside the city. Um, this is the most walkable area that you can have personally. You have literally every single thing you can think of on Main Street. This is Main Street right here. You have Oh my gosh, so many good places. The original uh, Pancake House, you got Squeeze Juicery over there, you have um, Bright Smith Brewery. I mean, there's a lot of things. And you can also walk to, look how many parks is close by. You got Glen Park, you got Garrison Park right here, you got uh, South Union Park over here, you, you, uh, literally another park across the street, Amherst State Park. And you also have two of the top country clubs, which are right, uh, the Country Club of Buffalo and then Park Country as well. So so you have a lot to do inside of Williamsville and all of these things are you can see in a 10 block radius. So, I mean, if you pick a really, really nice day, you can go from the park to the brewery back to your house if you live in inside of Williamsville. Now, going back to Amherst, Amherst is that place to be for a lot of people. Because of the cleanliness, the niceness, I don't even know if that's a word, the niceness of the safe, the safety of the area, Amherst is always voted. I think in 2012 or 2014, it was voted one in the top 10 safest cities in all of America. Amherst, year after year, has always proven to be a very, very safe neighborhood for everybody i don't i can't just say families or a single person or downsizers everybody amherst is really really a great place to be now to, because of that the taxes are a little bit higher and the price point is about 330 on average to move into this area but again you get the great schools you get a lot of still the same amenities so what in every single neighborhood whether you're over here by klein road and maple or you're in sweet home which is right next to the university or you're kind of like in that eggersville or snyder area each one of these little pocketed neighborhoods have their own what we call like a plaza or like a consumer square the consumer square you get all your shopping done from uh your clothes to your groceries to your wegmans um to your walgreens i mean all of these plazas have the essentials that you need remember buffalo is a 15 to 20 minute city you can get anywhere or get anything in less than that time even if you're looking to move into amherst but say you still want to like, ah, Devante, I know this is a suburb, but I still want to be close to the city from Amherst here, from Amherst here to Buffalo is about 15 minutes. It's not far from Buffalo to Chittawaga here is about 11 minutes. 
when I'm hustling, and especially if I got my bike with me, I can get, I can jump on a 290 or a 33 here and get to Buffalo in downtown in eight minutes. And I mean, I'm moving and grooving at that point. I don't recommend you drive that fast, but if you want to, you can get downtown comfortably or conservatively in about 12 minutes, 15 minutes uh, from Chittawaga and about, again, about 20 minutes from Amherst. And the reason why that is, and a lot of people um, forget about this, look how many highways we have. We have the 290 here. We have the 33 that basically takes you um, anywhere around from Buffalo. Um, uh, but uh, the 33 allows you to go back inside the city. The 290 really is goes all around the entire um, Buffalo area. You also have the 990, which kind of takes you more out towards like the Lockport area, like East Amherst or Swarmview. And then you also have the regular 90, which, you know, you could take this all the way down to Florida um, that floats. The 90 also floats all the way around. All the yellow marks that you see right here, this is all highway. We have about five highways, and that's the reason we don't have a lot of traffic. And also, we don't have millions of people inside our city either. But Buffalo was built to hold millions of people. Back in the day, they thought this was going to be the place to be. Didn't turn out the way they predicted, but that's okay. Uh, it's really, you know, I think more of the code or the climate. Um, some people blame politics i'm not a political guy nonetheless we don't have traffic here that's not something that you have to worry about you can leave 30 minutes before your flight and you could probably still make your flight to the buffalo uh niagara airport on time and i don't say that that you guys should do that at all because you Chances are you missed that flight when TSA is 30 minutes, you'll be upset. Nonetheless, we don't have traffic in the Buffalo area. That's not something that you guys have to worry about. Now, talked about Chitawaga a little bit um, before. Chitawaga, if you look at this, one of the best things about Chitawaga is its centrality. Chitawaga literally is in the middle of the entire Erie County area. So Erie County is our county that we live in. You can get the Buffalo here. You can get the Amherst here in eight minutes. You can get to Orchard Park down here in about 15 minutes. You know, you you just you are in the center of everything going to the airport, going to the Walden get ooh, too many lines. So Chittawaga to Walden Gallery, that's a five minute drive. Chittawaga going to the airport, that's an eight minute drive. As far as Central Calorie goes, I mean, you can hop on any highway you need to. That will get you there very quickly. I mean, Chita Walker is literally that central Cality place that a lot of people want to be to and close to. And on average right now in Chitawaga to live there, you're probably talking about 200,000, 210,000 for a home. So you, you definitely have a lot of opportunities there. Now, let's switch on to the South Towns. Um, that way we can wrap this video up again. South Towns, we're going to draw that line. These are South Towns. Some of the biggest ones that we know of here or a lot of people are accustomed to are going to be places like Orchard Park, Orchard Park, Hamburgers down here and East Aurora. These are well, really, I mean, West Seneca, East Seneca, too. But those are pretty much going to be your four major suburbs down below here in these South Towns that everybody knows of. Again, Orchard Park. This is a very affluent area. Even really some parts of Hamburg are very affluent too, but they definitely have more of a more first time home buyers or uh, more affordable areas to live in than Orchard Park. I think the average or median price point in Orchard Park is like 430,000 or something crazy like that. East, even East Aurora, we just sold one up here for a half a million. Really, really nice house. To me, you get more space for your dollar down in East Aurora as far as acreage goes, especially if you're in the town of Aurora, you can easily get a half an acre to an acre of land. And it's going to be less than if you live inside the village of East Aurora. So if you want to spend less, but get a little more land town of Aurora, if you want to still be kind of like in that walkable area, you can literally have a drink outside on a sidewalk in East Aurora and not get a ticket for it. You probably want to live in a village, but your price point is going to be a lot higher. There are building a lot of new builds in East Aurora as well. I know I'm kind of harping on this area because it's tucked out the way, but it's a really, really dope 
artsy, crafty, good vibe area. I mean, it's really, really nice, really nice. Um, Orchard Park, you guys know that's where the Bills play. Um, that's where a lot of festivities are. But other than that, Orchard Park has like a two block maybe call it call it three block on like west quaker and then buffalo road as far as things to do inside the village it doesn't have like a downtown or anything like that which is always shocking because you would think they would build around the stadium you know you would think it'd be like high rises here and here and here and here you know kind of like building up to support the stadium but no, <laughs> there's not for whatever odd reason. Now, with this new stadium that's coming and the amount of money that they're putting over here, we may see it. How they construct it is going to be very, very... I'm curious to see how they construct it if they do start to really pour money into this. this and this is will be like Buffalo's kind of like second downtown area. I'm very curious to see how they do that. Because literally, a lot of these... Uh, a lot of these areas or a lot of these blocks around the stadium are all neighborhood housing. So they will have to kind of buy these people out to put a high rise or a sky rise or hotels and things like that. I mean, you build a one point four billion dollar stadium and nobody people still have to drive a half an hour to the game or 25 minutes to the game. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be interesting how this plays out and again that will only drive prices up in orchard park when they're already four hundred and thirty thousand. so it's going to be curious I'm, I'm very curious to see what that looks like um and again with the amount of snow that they get and things like that are they going to do that how does that look for the future again comparing south towns to north towns to me you get a lot more land down here look at the greenery down here compared to something up north that is something, I mean, even, I mean, Chitawaka Amherst, this may show green, but there is there is a, a few green, but I could, I can assure you there's a lot more concrete in here than this map is portraying, especially, again, you could just see, see Chitawaka all gray, all concrete, but down south, you get a lot more land for your dollar to me, uh, personally. Um, even in Eden, I'm shocked this on the map, this is even displaying this. Trust me when I tell you, this is country for real. It ain't nothing in Eden um, that I know of. <laughs> but nonetheless, I mean, you have Chestnut Ridge Park, Kissing Bridge, uh, Buffalo Ski Center is down here, uh, Chestnut Ridge. Um, you also have Knox Farm State Park, which again, which is just outside of East Aurora. So the South Towns is like that country suburban feel. The North Towns is going to be like that city suburban feel. So. As always, I hope you guys truly, truly enjoyed this video. I know I just gave you guys a bunch of information. If you guys haven't already, check out this playlist of vlog tours. I've done tons of these vlog tours on almost all of these different towns. So that'll really give you a true in-person point of view of what these towns look like besides just the map. So if you guys have any questions or you guys don't already know, my name is Devontae Davis, the local realtor in and around the entire Buffalo area. So if you guys are planning on moving up here or you guys are in Buffalo just looking to move around and you really need that home, trying to sell your current one, trying to get another one, whatever it is, maybe real estate is my thing. I love to be of service to my people of Buffalo and the ones that's looking to become new Buffalonians. So make sure you guys hit me up with a call, email, or text. And as always, I will see you guys inside the next one.